It's no secret there are a ton of new devices out there that people are really interested in for minimally invasive body contouring. They're very much popularized on social media. But a new paper came out looking to identify and highlight adverse effects with these popular body contouring procedures. That's what we're gonna get into in this video, but before doing so, make sure you give it a thumbs up if you like getting skincare content from a board certified dermatologist, and be sure you're subscribed and you have your bell notifications on so you know as soon as my videos go live. The number of non-invasive body contouring procedures performed in the United States increased fivefold between 2011 and 2019, probably due to the fact that we had an increased number of these new devices, increased interest amongst consumers with all of the hype on social media, plus we had some downtime with the pandemic, many people put on weight and they wanted that addressed with a minimally invasive procedure. Whenever there is a new body contouring procedure being hyped up on social media, as a consumer, one thing you should be aware of is that pre-market evaluation of these devices will often fail to capture any potential long-term or delayed adverse events that can occur. So there's post-market surveillance. For this reason, the FDA created a database in 1991 to collect information on device-related deaths, injuries, and serious malfunction reported by the operator or the manufacturer. So in this new paper, researchers went through this database to identify adverse effects associated with non-invasive body contouring procedures. The paper was recently published in Lasers and Surgery and Medicine, and I'll link the reference down below, as well as a link to the database. The researchers analyzed 723 medical device reports from 2011 until 2020, 2021. Of those 723, 660 were for non-invasive body contouring, 55 were for cellulite treatment, and eight were for devices for muscle stimulation. It's kind of eye-opening. Of the 723 medical device reports, the majority, like 73% of them, happened in 2021. This actually mirrors what we already know, is that during the pandemic, um, with stay-at-home orders, people were staying at home, having that Zoom dysmorphia, which I have a video on, by the way. I definitely encourage you to check it out. Um, and also, maybe putting on weight in areas that they weren't so happy about, not being able to go to the gym or get as much exercise, being sedentary at home, eating more than they normally do in their regular working life, plus stress, hello. People put on weight and they look to body contouring procedures to address that. So in 2021, there was some relaxation, of course, of stay at home orders. People were seeking out these procedures in much higher numbers. That coupled with the fact that we now have a lot more of these devices, and you got the Kim Kardashian effect of social media. Consumers are just a lot more savvy about different procedures. Plus you also have a boom in the med spa industry. What were the adverse effects that they identified? In the realm of non-invasive body contouring, the most common adverse event is paradoxical adipose hyperplasia, or PAH, seen with cryolipolysis, otherwise known as cool sculpting. Hello, Linda Evangelista. I talked about this uh, earlier this year when she came out talking about how she had experienced paradoxical adipose hyperplasia, how it seriously impacted her quality of life. And we talked a lot about what exactly paradoxical adipose hyperplasia is in that video. But to remind you, cryolipolysis, or the brand name is Cool Sculpting, basically is a way to selectively target the fat because of its sensitivity to colder temperatures. It's estimated that over 8 million cool sculpting treatments have been performed worldwide. It's really popular for a variety of reasons, but probably because it is non-invasive. You don't have to undergo anesthesia. It's something that you can go in. There's very little downtime associated with it. And generally, it is well tolerated and safe. The most common adverse events with cool sculpting or cryolipolysis are going to be pain, discomfort, redness. You can have some hyperpigmentation in the area, itch, some strange sensations. You also can have some swelling, but all of these more common side effects with cool sculpting, they resolve in a couple of months after the treatment. They're not permanent. However, rarely you can develop this paradoxical adipose hyperplasia. What the heck is that? Exactly what it sounds, kind of a rebound increase in the number of fat cells in the area being treated. Basically the opposite of what you were seeking with this treatment. So for example, in the abdomen, you can have just a bulge of fat all of a sudden appear. We don't know why this happens. It may be some compensatory injury response to the cold temperature and a population of fat stem cells is triggered to differentiate and you get this rebound increase in the number of fat cells. The first report of 
paradoxical adipose hyperplasia was in 2014, but cool sculpting has been around since 2010. And since 2014, when PAH was first reported, we have seen more and more reports of this occurring. Paradoxical adipose hyperplasia usually appears around two to three months after getting cool sculpting. So it's not something that is seen right away. And in some cases it can happen around six months after treatment. So it's important that if you have this, you follow up with the provider so they can monitor for this, what is thought to be rare side effect. Although this new study is pointing out that maybe it's not as rare as we're thinking. Estimates of how frequent this occur ranges anywhere from 0.5% to 1% of all people, but it may be more common and underreported. What are the risk factors for developing paradoxical adipose hyperplasia with cool sculpting? Being male, treatment of the abdomen, a larger handpiece for the device, having a history of cryolipolysis in the past, being of Hispanic origin, and possibly genetic factors play a role as well. And the treatment is to undergo liposuction, or in rare cases, you actually have to undergo an abdominoplasty. So basically a tummy tuck to get rid of it. So this is not what people want when they're seeking this procedure out. To be clear, it doesn't appear to be a super common side effect, but we really don't know how common it is. And it is an adverse event that is delayed in onset. So we could be missing some cases of it. But moving on, they also looked at 55 medical device reports for cellulite treatment. The most common adverse effect that they identified was actually scarring and keloid formation reported in about 20% of medical device reports. What device was associated most with scars and keloids in the realm of cellulite treatments? Selfina a subcision device, basically breaking up the bands of fibrous tissue to decrease the dimpling of the surface of the skin. Nine cases of scars and keloids. Now, there weren't a lot of medical device reports for muscle stimulation, only eight. Of these eight, burns were actually the most common adverse event, accounting for three of the reports. There are also two cases of pain, one case of electrical shock, one case of urticaria, which is the medical term for hives. As a side note, if you deal with hives, I do have a video on how to deal with hives, so check that out. Anyways, and there was one case of arrhythmia. I thought this was a really cool study. I wanted to share it with you guys because patients are increasingly seeking out these non-invasive body contouring procedures, and there are a lot of med spas offering these. Many of these devices are relatively new on the market. As I said at the beginning of the video, pre-market safety analysis of these devices doesn't capture potentially delayed onset adverse effects. So going back to these types of databases and mining them to see if there are any reports is really important and really helpful so that we can better educate patients on potential safety concerns. Ultimately, that's going to improve patient safety and patient satisfaction. However, with the approach that they're taking by mining this database, there are some limitations. They're relying on the quality of the information in the reports. Of course, there's the potential for underreporting. Maybe some of these things are more common and it's just not being captured because people aren't reporting to this database. And then there's also the issue possibly of selection bias. Patients are increasingly seeking out these non-invasive procedures for body contouring and they're perceived as being safe and they are safe procedures, but there's no such thing as a risk-free procedure. Capturing this long-term information and analyzing it is important so that you can have a better understanding of any potential adverse events and risks so that it can guide you as a consumer as to if this is gonna be right for you. For example, paradoxical adipose hyperplasia with cool sculpting, cryolipolysis, it was actually the most common adverse event, but it's just thought to actually be pretty rare. But maybe you're somebody who doesn't like the even remote possibility of that. Maybe you have multiple risk factors, male, you're interested in treating the abdominal area, maybe you're Hispanic, those are risk factors. And maybe you're not so comfortable with that. Really important for safety and satisfaction. This you know, may be something that you wanna avoid or at least know that going in and your doctor can also appropriately counsel you. As we get more of these devices and more people are becoming knowledgeable about them through social media, there's an increased demand. Basically more procedures, more problems. It doesn't mean that these are unsafe and you know something you should completely stay away from, but as more and more people seek out these procedures, inevitably, just by a numbers game, there are going to be more reports of complications. And understanding those complications, getting a better sense of the 
likelihood of those complications, who's at risk for them, is very important. And this type of database, while it's not perfect, it has its limitations, this approach of analyzing the database is one way to get a sense of what are the long-term safety issues that might be popping up with some of these devices that when they undergo pre-market evaluation, not, are not gonna capture. Recently, I did a video talking about radio frequency microneedling. Check that out if you missed it. I'm really hopeful that either this group or another group will go in and mine this database looking at the medical device reports for radio frequency microneedling devices, radio frequency, and ultrasound, other body contouring uh, non-invasive devices because increasingly more and more people are seeking these out. Let me know if you have done any kind of body contouring procedure like cool sculpting. Did you have an adverse event? Did you get the results that you were hoping for? Anyways, you guys, I wanted to share this with you. I think it is an interesting study and I think it, hopefully it helps you be more informed about potential risks associated with these non-invasive procedures. Again, non-invasive or minimally invasive, it doesn't mean risk-free. And knowing as much as you possibly can is the best thing for you, not only from a safety perspective, but so that you can be satisfied because these procedures, they are not free. Insurance is not gonna cover these. And you wanna make sure that you are satisfied if you're gonna be plunging down that amount of money and you wanna make sure that you are safe and you're not putting yourself at risk for a potential complication that you're not gonna be happy with. And as always, seek out a board certified physician for these treatments. It's a red flag if you go in somewhere and the provider is really pushing you to do certain procedures and you feel like they're kind of glossing over uh, what to expect and potential long-term consequences, go somewhere else, get another opinion, because this is not medically necessary. It's not, these are not you know, acutely life-threatening issues whatsoever. So take your time and feel out different people and get a sense of if these procedures are actually what you want in the long run. All right, you guys, I hope this video was helpful to you all. On the end slate, I'm going to put my recent video on radio frequency microneedling. So check that one out if you are interested. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.